Welcome to another super electric edition of Business Leader of the Week right here on Daba TV with your host, Chris Annie. I know you've missed me on set. I know you guys have missed me. <laughs> well, yes, I am back this time. And on today's edition, I have someone amazing. The cryptocurrency industry and the blockchain industry in Africa is being built and has been built by visionaries, entrepreneurs, business leaders, risk takers who have tried, succeeded, failed, built, and succeeded again in making sure we have amazing products that will help in piloting the future of this technology here in Africa and beyond Africa too. And before I will introduce this person, I'd like us to go on a short break. And when I come back, I will introduce this entrepreneur who is our business leader of the week right here on Daba TV. We'll go on a short break. Guess what? The new and improved Daba app helps you learn courses at the go. Now you can learn with ease, buy a course for a friend, use coupons, refer an end, and make money online. Remember, the future is in your hands. Download the Dabba mobile application today. The tree you are sitting on today was built by someone, was planted by someone years ago. And the future of cryptocurrency, like I said, and, and blockchain technology in Africa, is being built by young visionaries, young entrepreneurs, young business leaders, builders, risk takers, who are challenging the status quo and even with the environment are going on to build amazing products and systems. I have here with me Ugo Chuku, who is our business leader of the week. And welcome to Daba TV, Ugo. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> Ugo is my very good friend and um, he's one of the business leaders in the technology industry right here in Africa. Ugo. It's, it's an amazing time again. And yeah. um, I know that today you have a lot of package for us. You want to unleash. Let us meet Ugo. Well, thanks, Chris. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Super excited to be here, actually. Right. Um, okay, so, well, my name is Ugo Chuku Arono, and um, I'm an engineer. Um, been building for over seven years professionally, right? I um, studied in the University of Nigeria and Soka in Enugu State. So... Liars. I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was born here in Nigeria. I've lived all my life here, basically, right? So, yeah, and um, got into the blockchain space in 2016 as a builder. Okay. Uh, built things like, um, you know, my own cryptocurrency wallet system from ground up. Because I actually learned, started learning about the blockchain when one of my friends in Finland, mm. a colleague told me about it. He told me that he was like, look, I should check this thing out that he feels is something that I would like to learn mm. and yeah so i started looking into it started you know learning building and writing so, um, code around the blockchain and building out my own system so it really made me understand how the whole thing really you know fits together mm. yeah so that's what i did starting from 2016 so i built like my own wallet systems that a lot of companies now use yeah including some of companies that are built they use it as core infrastructure for their wallet services also built um um, a peer-to-peer -peer internet service system, Ycrypt, which I'll be talking mostly about much later, you know, today, and also build um, Zen Finance, which is um, a DeFi protocol, okay. you know, to enable people um, get access to um, stable cryptocurrency and protect them from inflation and devaluation, right? And yeah, over the years, it's been really interesting. And some of these um, companies are backed by huge, great investors, like the likes of Binance, Polygon, oh. you know, Google. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's been, that's a little bit about, you know, my background and what we've done, yeah, so far. That's another wonderful entrepreneur we have here in Nigeria, and I'm so glad to hear this from the University of Nigeria, and Suka. <laughs> um, so tell us, uh, I'm sure the audience will be wondering if it's another ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> what is Ycrypt? Um, okay, so Ycrypt actually is, um, it's a service that allows people to make money when they share their Wi-Fi. That's in simple terms. So I have Wi-Fi. Yeah. I share my Wi-Fi. And you share your Wi-Fi. And I make money. You make money from it. So let's, let's sit down and understand how <laughs> the system works. Yeah, cool. So basically what we built here in Ycrypt is um, we allow... Uh, Ycrypt is um, a system that when you create a hotspot network with our 
devices called the hotspot hubs. Mm -hmm. It allows people to connect in real time to those devices once they are within the area it's covering. Mm -hmm. And once they connect to those devices, they start paying you based on the billing rate you have set. Now, so and you really don't have to know who those people are, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, you're also able to mine our native cryptocurrency while you actually share and distribute your hotspot. This is actually the first time this has been done in the world. And then we actually have a copyright for this technology, right? Um, it's taking us close to over two years in building the first version, but we've been building since 2018. Wow. Building this technology, yeah, because of different. Let me understand something. Are you MTN? No, 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 no. No, no, no. So do we you don't know. The Wi-Fi I'm sharing is my personal network. Yeah, you're any network at all. So okay. if you have MTN, even if let's say you're in Dubai, you have maybe Virgin there, you're in the US, maybe you have AT&T, Verizon, okay. you just plug it in, you're good to go. It distributes any internet um, um, source you plug to it. I yeah. hope you don't mind that I keep asking more questions about this because I know that our audience won't really know. Yeah, yeah, sure, please so go ahead. What white Shoot. crypt is about is this device. Yeah. And I can use my own personal network. Yeah. Even if it's my office. Uh, yeah, office internet, yeah. Or yeah. MTN or yeah. Intelat or Blue. Yeah. Same way I can use it. So what you're saying is that white crypt can be used anywhere in the world. Anywhere it's at all. It's not specific to Nigeria. To a particular location. No, oh, it's not. Interesting. It's ISP agnostic, meaning that any internet service provider can actually be used. Any internet service provider network can be used on it. Okay, interesting. So uh, I think this other third question I want to ask is something you've already partially answered. I was like, describe the technology that makes up this white crypt. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So um, the... Tech stack, right, for white crypt um, cuts across the hardware, the software that's, that runs as the operating system that runs on the hardware, and then you have our mobile apps and our web infrastructure. So I'll start by explaining first, like the hardware. So in we actually had this um, in 2018 when we started working on this. We had to go ahead with you know um, building out our own technology infrastructure, which really had to leverage on our own hardware because okay. existing operating systems or the existing services would easily like remove us from their own network or their own um, technology. So how to build our own system. So we have the hardware, right? Then we have our own operating system that runs on this hardware, mm -hmm. right? And the operating system is based out of Linux, right? Which is like an open source operating system. But we now built our own flavor around it to give us complete access, mm -hmm. right? So we can manage um, the way data or packet information flows on the hardware. We have full control, mm -hmm. right? And then we have our mobile apps on Android and iOS. And of course, we have our cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Then there's now the blockchain aspect, right? So the blockchain aspect is where all the magic of you know, mining the cryptocurrency mm. and all that reward incentives. That's where it all happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another part of the um, um, technology that also now makes everything really nice to look at is something we call the Explorer. Mm. So the Explorer is this open view on um, our website. You, go to, you can go to scan.whitecrypt.com. It's an Explorer where you see a global view of all the devices everywhere they are in the world and what they are currently doing. Let's say the internet speed um, of that particular all the device. Connected to wire Everybody, yeah, all the ones connected globally. to Wi-Fi globally. Yeah, and we call it like an open data network. Before now, you would not be able to really know internet speeds in anywhere in the world, maybe cities and all that. You most likely need to depend on the um, reports from maybe individual consulting companies who have aggregated these reports over time. Mm. But now, we're the first company in the world to create that open system where, like, as at this point, if we go to... Um, um, with our explorer, right? You can see internet speed in the UK now because we have devices there. Mm. You can see in Dubai, you mm. can see in the US, mm. you can see in Lagos, you can see in Enugu. Wow. You can see all these things in real time without exposing the user's personal information. Mm. But you're able to see this. So you're able to even aggregate data. You're able to know performance of networks, of telecommunication across systems different across nations. different nations. Interesting. So yeah, so these are like some of the things our technology embodies, yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So if I want to get this wire crypt now, I, I just get this device. Yeah. And, and you just download our mobile app. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, you're good to go. We have like the manual how you can set up, connect, and we even have videos on our YouTube um, channel and you can So you that. mentioned something about token sharing. So can yeah. you explain the tech around that? Let me know. You I know it's blockchain, but yeah. how does I, I know you, how does 
sharing my network yeah, gives me translate to Yeah, exactly. That's a very beautiful question. So let's look at it this way, right? Um, the main aim, really, of creating YCrypt is that we want people to be able to have cheap internet, mm. um, very fast internet, and access to internet in remote areas or in rural areas, areas where you will not necessarily see mm. internet infrastructure. Mm. Now, so what we decided to do in terms of the rewarding or mining of crypto as incentives is we built a model, right, that will allow us to translate the amount of data people have shared, the, correct, the concurrent cor connections people have, mm. the um, location where their devices are, to translate all that information, right, into, it's actually a very complex mathematical model, but we've been able to translate all that information into this model. And then we now feed this model, right, with real-time data from these devices. Mm. And based on results from this model, we are able to now trigger our, um, like we have a smart contract on, on the Polygon blockchain mm -hmm. that can now emit these um, tokens to people based on their performances, right? Mm. And this whole system is built around something called um, a proof of stake. So before you even go to start to mine or to access the system, you have to have staked a certain amount of our tokens. Now, why mm -hmm. you have to stake those tokens is that it shows that you're a bona fide member of the ecosystem, that you want the network to grow, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of like the values or the utilities of, of the token. So it shows that, yes, I'm a bona fide member of the YCrypt network. Mm -hmm. And then when I stake, it shows that, okay, I'm invested in the growth of this network. So when you do that, you're now able to start accessing different services within the YCRIP network. So that's basically how the mining or the reward works. So you follow certain reward models, mm. right, that we have built in. And when you meet those criteria that the reward models have spelled out, then you'll be able to earn right. these tokens. For example, someone in a rural area, maybe in, um, let's say my village now, I'm from Ogidi in Anambra. Um, let's say some part of Ogidi that might not have um, network, network. Mm. you can see someone can take out his money and pull internet to that place. Mm. When he takes internet to that place, with our devices, he has the power to share yeah. and distribute. Mm. But the person doing all that, you see that that person would mine more tokens as incentives more than, you know, the person maybe who is in the central part of Lagos who mm. has access to inter areas where you have access to internet. Mm. So that way you've seen that we've used this model to incentivize people to create internet in areas where there is no internet or even areas where you have internet to make sure people around there have access to internet. to internet. Yeah, so that's how the mining model works. And that is why we actually built it, you know, to incentivize people. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's an interesting one. Before we go on this break, I, I, I know building a technology company in this part of the world is never an easy <laughs> feat. You've been doing this for two years plus. How's it been like? Man, it's been it's been tough. Actually, we've been doing it for almost four years. Now we built this in like we built the first version in like two years, but we started in twenty eighteen. It's been almost four years. And for it's it been to tough. be first of its kind. Yeah. Because I used to know that if you want to do business, you look for copy, you try to get a model. And what's the inspiration behind just building something that's the first of its kind? And you never thought, oh, this is Nigeria, first of its kind doesn't flow yet. How's it been like? How, how, how? Explain to, explain to us here. Yeah. So, so the thing is, the, the ecosystem isn't like, or well, the environment isn't as friendly, right, to be honest. But the environment has also helped. That's what really made us have this. So I'll give you an example. When, for the idea, it popped up where in 2018, early 2018, when we were in my office just building out um, software, and then I realized that my internet stopped working, mm. right? Then I asked my colleagues, hey, can you guys give me access to your Wi-Fi? Let me connect shortly. So they were like, no, that I usually consume a lot of data. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I was going to consume the entire data without them knowing how much I consumed. Mm. So I said, OK, what if we could build a service that would allow me to connect to anybody's network mm -hmm. at any time? Mm -hmm. And then I will be paying the person based on, what I use. based on what I use. And the person doesn't have to even authenticate me. The system does the authentication Automatic. automatically and everything. Mm. So that's how the idea came up. So we realized that the environment really actually created this, but also Building it here again was was a nightmare. It wasn't it wasn't easy. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'm sure you've been having you've been enjoying the conversation I'm having with um, uh, Ugo Chuku, and um, we'll go on a short break. And before we do, I'd like you to share in the comments what you've been learning. Kindly share this video 
invite your friends and family to also watch click the like button let me also know what you think about the few uh, minutes we've spent here discussing about why crypt we'll be right back let's go on the short break guess what the new and improved app app helps you learn courses at the go now you can learn with ease buy a course for a friend use coupons refer an end and make money online remember the future is in your hands download the dab mobile application today Welcome back to Business Leader of the Week. Uh, and on this edition, I've been talking with the CEO and founder of YCrypt. And um, it's an amazing technology platform that I'm sure you want to also explore. And then um, we'll go, we'll, I, want to, I want to know, all the people involved in this project are local? Yes, they are all, they are actually all local. Every part of this technology, right, was built here in Nigeria. Actually, every part of this technology was built in Enugu. Wow. Yeah, the design... Who for to... <laughs> <laughs> so the design of the hardware, hmm. every single thing was actually created in Nigeria. Hmm. Yeah, so basically the only thing we had to do outside the country was of course to mass produce. Hmm. Of course, because we don't, Nigeria doesn't really have all that, um, um, you know, infrastructure for mass production of electronic components like this, but yeah. But the design, all, all the things, the every single line of code actually written on this was actually done here in Nigeria. Yeah. There are business leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, both upcoming and those who are already doing businesses that are watching this show. Yeah. And I would like to ask, you've been building businesses for several years. Yeah. What has been the challenge like? Okay, so one of the major... And how did you tackle them? <laughs> so one major challenge, I think the first one, right, I faced in you know, starting to build, and even I'm still building, right, is access to talent. So in Nigeria, they are extremely brilliant people, extremely mm. talented people. Mm. But the problem is that most times, um, those people go ahead to now do things that don't really exhibit or show how good they are. They just go to do regular kind of jobs, right? Mm. Now, being able to get people and to enable them know that, look, you can actually do this stuff. Mm. It's quite hard because this um, technology is creating them is very challenging, mm -hmm. extremely challenging mm -hmm. mentally, right? So you would realize that, that is, you need to actually cross that hurdle first of getting people, convincing them, mm. and then now really training them. So the first set of developers we had, I actually trained them myself. And then some of our co-founders, also helped in that but all our co-founders as well at early stages right they are all technical people because we realized that the major lack we had was the talent mm. do you understand technical talent and till today it's still a huge challenge mm. right because when you want to build out very complex systems you need people who think quite differently and being able to access those people and even convince them, you know, is another is thing. Yeah, and to train. So, but yeah, that's one of the challenges. Second one is mostly like the environment, right? So you look at the environment where you have, um, you don't have access to basic things. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have access to basic things, you know, to for a human being to actually like survive. Maybe you're talking about power. You're talking about um, water. You're talking about shelter, right? So security, right? So you realize that it's really tough when you have to also um, have to deal with those challenges that it's not necessarily your job. It's mm. supposed to be done by maybe the government and mm. all that, right? Yeah, so, and also that's one of the reasons that even made me decide to stay back in Enugu. Mm. I was born there, but... The environment is really, it's serene, it's calm. You really don't have access to, you don't have, um, um, what's it called? You don't have problems like Lagos you face boys. in... Lagos in, boys not like this. <laughs> you don't have the problems you face in big cities like Lagos, right? Mm -hmm. Traffic and all that. Because people that will build things like this, they need to be in a space where they can think. Yes. They don't need Serenity. to... Yeah, exactly. They don't need places where, you know, they will have to fight every minute, you know, <laughs> for them to get to work. <laughs> and all that stuff so yeah so these are like some of the challenges and also cost when we started to build white crypt to be honest we didn't do 
And if, if it was even just in December that we did a small fundraising, right? Mm. Y Crips has been a profitable business. Mm. We didn't have to do any fundraising. How many users do you currently have? Um, so Y Crips has um, over 20, about 25,000 users now. But the active devices that we have on the um, in the market, we have over 500 active devices. Mm. Then we have 300, about 316 that are actually mining currently. Mm. And we expect that number to grow by more than 5x in the next three to six months. Mm. Yeah. So, and you realize that for technology like this, it has evolved over the years. Mm. You know, initially we started with mobile app, just mobile app sharing. And then we had these guys, Yank us off. Mm. And we now, uh, as Google and Apple, because we were digging deep into their OS to access this. So we now have to create our own. So you realize that these systems, right, for you to actually get people to work on this, man, you need those people to be in an environment that things are, you know, things are Talent, good. Yeah. Talent, environment. environment. Are two core challenges. Yeah. And then, actually, I think the last one is, I think is acceptance, right? Mm. Maybe then, maybe the last thing, money, but acceptance. What I mean by acceptance, you know, most times when you talk about things from this part of the world, mm. most people think that you don't know what you're saying, mm. right? Maybe because you're not white or maybe because you're not from one Ivy League First school tour. or something, right? Most people think you... But I think that people here are extremely brilliant. And, I mean, if they could just, I mean, hear them out, right? Yeah. So I think that's one major challenge we face, especially when you had to talk to some people about your technology and they're like, are you sure it works? Because Can you you're, show? Because, because, because it's you're in from, Nigeria. Yeah. You're... But that also really made me very excited about, you know, some of the people. Actually, the first person that purchased our devices... Um, was Victor Semota, right? Mm. That was in 2019, yeah, or so, wow. yeah. So, because he had a service, he wanted to solve this problem. So, his company wanted to do something like this for their agents and all mm. that. They wanted to collect some data and all. So, when I told him about this, it was like that they've been talking to a lot of telecommunications companies. And they can't, they can't. And they can't even do this, right? So, he said, are you sure your technology can do it? I said, yes. So, I had to prove that we could do it. I immediately we did it. This company purchased 50 of our devices. That was a lot of money. And we're just three guys. Hmm. We didn't have like, oh, maybe you. So we just three. Yeah. Yeah. So it also made me know that, look, I don't really blame people who are out there who might not believe you. But as long as the people within your ecosystem can't believe you, that's a lot. Hmm. Right? So I just went ahead to, you know, continuously build and then prove to other people. And I think now um, that narrative is sort of changing where... Yes people are now seeing that there's so much value from here, Yes. right? Yeah, so that acceptance is the third one. Then the final one, of course, is money or funding, right? Because when you want to do things like this, um, you need to be able to access, uh, like, investors. When you want to now scale, mm. initially, we didn't need that, right? Because or we're, already, we're already a profitable company, but we realized that, okay, if we want to scale to other countries or make these devices in large quantity, mm. you had to do, like, a small fundraising. So we had mm. a small fundraise of about 1.5 million in December. Ugo said a small fundraise of 1.5 million. No, but... <laughs> no, it's no, not... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So, but it's small, really, compared to what you see a of lot course. of people announcing. Because we really didn't need all that money. With that amount, we could make our devices and then continuously grow without having to, you know, get any, uh, actually, uh, more money and all that. So... I, I struggle because I, I come from a background where, I, where you know, you build businesses like the former employ, uh, the employers I had, mm. there was nothing like raising money. You actually build businesses from ground up. You're bootstrap raising, it. Yeah, you bootstrap it. So that's how, like, even the first set of companies I found, everything is boost. You don't come out and, you know, you're just like, oh, you're looking for investors. Yeah. Especially if you're doing something like maybe software that, you know, doesn't really, that you can sit in one place and offer services. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, those are like the challenges. Yeah. So, if you're watching this uh, program, I'd like you to just at least the challenges that will go as put and let me know in the comment section because the Daba TV team will be watching and they can select a winner. Uh, you, you, you mentioned something about uh, Victor Simota. Yeah. And you mentioned how he went to a telecom company and they couldn't solve this. Are you saying WeiCrip doesn't have any competition now? No. Okay, so that's one of the things that makes me really happy. So the way our technology is, like earlier, um, I said our device is ISP agnostic. What that means is any internet service provider can plug in. So all the ISPs anywhere, they are not our competition. They are, not they are actually um, partners, partners, people that can partner works, with us, yeah. right? These are people that, because we are not, an, like, even Starlink, hmm. 
So Starlink just announced that they are coming to Nigeria. Nigeria. They have the license. So once you people have started pre-ordering, right? Once you have your Starlink um, satellite, you can actually plug the internet from your Starlink to our device and it distributes. And share to others. Yeah. So it just works out of wow. the box. So we are not um, we are not um, a competition with any of these ISPs. So this is also like an opportunity for you know ISPs to even try to reach out to us. You know, to see how we can use this service to create more value. Because what we've built here is something that creates more value for your internet, your regular internet. Mm. Instead of maybe just using your regular modem. I'm already thinking of one business <laughs> like this now. Just thinking of a business. <laughs> when you mention Starlink. Okay, so since not everyone wants to afford the Starlink. Yeah. I just look for one, one community like that. Yeah, one exactly. Hostel, exactly. And I install you it. You install there. it and use this to distribute. And yeah. they start paying me. Yeah. And, and, and also that's good business yeah <laughs> yeah and from the tokens you mine right the tokens you mine is not like this is maybe a get rich quick scheme mm. this device is more of an asset in mm. terms of it creates value for your internet so you're able to mine those tokens you can resell mm. it's money that you're earning you mm. can even use that money to offset your regular internet cost mm -hmm. but with your regular internet if you're, you're just consuming mm -hmm. there is nothing coming back so work, yeah, yeah exactly so this is something you know we is we refer to it as you know the share to earn economy you mm. know you're sharing yes. and you're earning yes. so yeah it's share to earn basically it's a it's a it's a reward it's a reward based system yeah i'm just i'm in the voice of sabinus i'm just correctly calculating <laughs> just calculating okay if i put one what? in the port if i put one in the community yeah if i have like five now one year i become a millionaire <laughs> i'm an investor <laughs> Investor Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's 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 interesting. So um I, I think you've answered this before. I was gonna ask you in the numbers, are you able to estimate how much white crypt users have earned so far? Okay. Yeah, so I think I can just um based on previous reports uh, that we've received in the last couple of weeks, um we've seen people who earned um, close to, let's say, between four hundred to five hundred dollars mm. in a month, mm. just by mining. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And you know now the oh, the global economy is 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 in is in a mess, sort of. Even the, the cryptocurrency market is not so great. So even if at um, very low value of um, the tokens and all that, people are still able to make something that is is cool out of it. Yeah. yeah. And um, like I mentioned earlier, it's not like a get rich quick scheme. This is something that will allow that incentivizes you to create internet and create more value. Before now, your regular internet won't even give you any value at all. Mm. You know. So what, what we want people to look at is, yeah, you can actually generate revenue from this passive, passive income. income. Yeah, without necessarily, like yeah, yeah, exactly, doing so much. Yeah. You know, and this, um, and you're doing an overall good to the world, mm. really, by mm. doing this because you're making internet cheaper. You're mm -hmm. making it more accessible. accessible. you yeah, exactly. And another thing is you're creating. An open data network to allow people to even gauge their performance as ISPs. Mm. Because before now, most people would just be like, maybe you hear some ISPs, um, some people saying, oh, this internet is not good here, this one is not good here. Some of those internet service providers might not necessarily be able to collect that data in real time. Yes, sir. But with these devices, you can just go to our explorer, you can just see, oh, maybe Swift or this one here, mm. the internet speed is low. Mm. You can even start to make business decisions from this Please so this that. is offering data that was not available to the world it's offering it to the end and you know that's the whole point of the blockchain really mm. it, it helps to open make data open you make data open yes yeah exactly i'm not compromising on someone's privacy yeah so which is which is great this is this is a sound lecture i was enjoying the old passion Ugo using this is like the first time i've seen Ugo doing a tea a, 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 a talk like this man i'm I'm already caught up. We're going on another short break and um, we will be right back. And please, uh, for those of you who are business people, start thinking of how to order your own white crypt so that we can actually join hands together <laughs> and make real-time passive income. Even though it's not a get-rich-quick scheme, but I know that if I, if I have like 100 network, <laughs> I can be generating millions of it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Business Leader of the Week right here on Daba TV. If you're watching this show and you've not used the subscribe button, you've not used the share button, 
please do that right now. And remember, I gave a question before we went on break, and I'm sure you're already sharing the answers right now in the comments section. Like they used to say, don't just wait for opportunity, learn how you can create one. And my very good friend and business leader, Ugo Chuku, has created something uh, that his future self will be proud of. Remember I said earlier on that the tree you're sitting on, someone built it 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And we're seeing someone pound, use cryptocurrency, blockchain, to build something in the internet sharing business. And it's something that, it, it, this, this, is, this, is, this is our own Elon Musk, this is our own Starlink, this is our own, uh, our own system. And I'm super proud of it. Ugo, you've done very Thank you. well with Thank you. this technology. And I, 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 like, I do wish, or I would say, that it's time for us to keep encouraging innovators rather than people who go out there to steal money and who go out there to cause menace in the society, whether in politics or in business or any area. Inventors are people who still help to build the future of our nation any day, any time. And putting this invention here is a big feat. Uh, I'm sure you were there uh, some months back when we were in Dubai. And uh, I visited uh, during the Dubai Expo. I visited the Russia's um, uh, their pavilion. Okay. And I went inside and I saw electric vehicle mm -hmm. that will not that will, that will not run on fuel. Yeah. I saw different inventions they were showcasing, and they're showcasing this thing back to people in the eighties, the nineties, the eighteen eighty something, yeah. and. You wonder how this country is today. Yeah. The future of any country yeah. is not just built by political leaders. No. It's also built by inventors. Yeah. Okay. And for you to invent this thing, uh, you know what it means to it means for the country. It's not just not just the money alone. The image that it's bringing out, and for the people that will use it and have access. To it, I'm just thinking about it. Uh, one of the biggest challenge in the world today is still the access to internet yeah. in rural yeah. communities. Yeah. I know Facebook even had a project on that, on Wi-Fi project yeah. and all that. And seeing you do this thing is something, something amazing. And that's why we've chosen Ugo Chuku to be our business leader of the week. And Ugo, before we round up, what's the future of y -Crip like? You know, just before I answer that question, when you mentioned Russia, I remember I was in Russia in 2018. Oh. And I was blown away with you know it was during the world cup as well but we had a presentation for a blockchain stuff then in russia but it was it was an amazing experience even talking to their engineers just like you said you know seeing what this guy showcased years ago years back you know you could imagine how good they've become now and those people are good hmm. i spoke to a lot of their engineers across different fields and they are really really enlightened hmm. so that's where when you see a lot of innovations, a lot of things happen, even like the International Space Station. Mm. Majority of the components are created by Russians. They are Russian components, right? And when you look at these things, you 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 would marvel, but then it's not a mistake. These it's things not. are things that have happened over and these people are consistent. Mm. You know, we're creating and defining the future that mm. we live in today. Mm. And I think mm. for us to take that kind of um, I mean I, I I don't believe it's ever late, right? It's not, for it's for people to to make this stand. And I think for us at this point, this is what we're one thing we're taking seriously to be able to start, you know, bringing up that fire of invention, you mm. know, pulling people out and know, telling them, look, you, you could actually do something by doing something and other people like seeing it as examples. Yeah. So for me, the future of white crypt, right, is actually one where people are able to access right data in remote areas people are able to monetize their data sure. you know with ease mm. and it becomes a norm it becomes a regular thing you know it just takes everything that we are experiencing today maybe as about 20 years maybe maybe 50 or 100 years ago it seemed maybe it would seem like magic there's this popular quote from um, Arthur C. Clarke that Elon Musk usually talks about it's like look Sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Maybe before now, you might not even imagine that you'll be having a call with someone in the US, maybe seeing the person's face in real time, it's, right? It's still magic to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So one thing we want to do is to be able to, this is like the first version of this device. 
we want we are also doing much more research right in the space of you know connectivity not just internet in space of connectivity low level like electronics mm. you know this research would create a new dawn really when it comes to information sharing mm. when it comes to creating value you know with things that we just take maybe for granted or things that we felt that didn't have value before mm. that's actually the future why crypto would you know, evolve into a space where it can exist in so many devices or in so many areas without you even knowing that, look, this thing exists here. Mm -hmm. But it's creating impact, deep impact, you know, improving the digital economy. So that's where we see um, um, YCrypt, you know, in the next few years. And of course, growing the user base, you know, uh, user base for people who are actually creating or getting value from this. Ugo, you've been in business for the number of years you've mentioned, 2018, six years, seven years, and you've even done fundraising, you've built an amazing technology, not even just one company, two yeah, companies yeah. and all. Yeah. So uh, how would you advise startup founders considering the good, the bad, the ugly that you've experienced? Uh, there's no way you're going to tell me how your journey was so rosy <laughs> and today you already have white creed. Yeah. What advice would you give, looking at your own experience doing business all over the years, what advice would you have for startup founders? Yeah, so number one is um, the startup founders need to, you know, you just need to keep doing what you're doing regardless of what you know, experiences that you're facing, you know, regardless of how hard, you know, you see the environment or the circumstances might be, mm. right? And that requires discipline. Mm. That's usually anytime I talk to people, the first thing I talk about is discipline. It's almost impossible for you to try to achieve anything, no matter how, you know, good or simple you think it might be without putting in effort. Mm. And people sort of um, always, you know, lose focus of how much effort they actually put into learning things now because when you grow old i'll give an example so um as a child maybe you can't recall that memory but maybe when if something like elon is building which is, is um neural link mm. if he's able to achieve it maybe we might be able to access very deep parts of our memory <laughs> right now you realize that as a child you you couldn't walk really you were crawling mm. I wish maybe there was a way for maybe um, neurologists to be able to check the amount of pain or the amount of stress mm. it will take a child to stop, to crawl, and then to walk. Mm. But what it takes actually is discipline, determination. Maybe you see people doing it, yes. and then you start to do it. But because the person is a child, you might not know how much pain the person is going through mm. because how many times the person will fall and cry. Mm. But you know, as you get older, your brain is much more developed. Mm -hmm. You can now see some things, but instead of putting that amount of um, walk, you, your brain can easily tell you it's not worth it, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe you start something and you just stop. So I feel discipline is extremely important, right? So mm -hmm. for every founder. Then the second thing is, you know, when you want to hire people, I think you should hire, um, you know, um, it's culture over competence. How do people, because how do people treat other people? Mm -hmm. Most people think it's all about talent or maybe how brilliant someone is. I like this one. Yeah, so most times it's, it's culture over competence, that's how we, 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 we hire, right? You might see someone who isn't so good, but then just give the person time with mm. that same discipline, continuous effort. Mm. You see that this person becomes exceptional. Mm. And that's why there's this popular quote that Elon like has that it says, um, it's possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it that way, you realize that any person can actually be extraordinary, right? Mm -hmm. And all you just need to do, first thing is, that person needs to have a good heart. The person needs to have good culture, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So for me, I think that is um, um, the second thing. All that, of course, founders just have to be, I mean, they have to be very, very, very humble, right? And then <laughs> financially, you know, literate or sort of financially prudent or, you know, frugal. Because to be honest, you realize that in this current time and era, mm. It's very easy for people to raise millions of dollars, mm. right? And when you raise all that money, people become very proud. And what even it does is it makes them even lose sight of what they will even raise the money to do, mm. right? So I've seen that affect a lot of founders. You know, you have access to money and then everything just, you feel everything works. So honestly, it's not the best. So I think 
that's like the advice you know to these founders when you when you have access to these funds try to focus on the reason the why yeah work and there is this thing actually if i'll talk about maybe mostly for found african founders mm -hmm. right if you look at um industries that you know we've or the industry that we've really focused on in africa yeah. as startups is mostly finance mm. fintech fintech right one thing i would like to advise a lot of founders it's very easy to create a fintech company because a lot of the infrastructure has already been built mm -hmm. the barrier to entry is so low mm -hmm. now the problem with that is that it creates massive competition and it doesn't make you special hmm. To be honest, at this point, we really need to do things that will make us special. Just like you went to uh, Dubai, the expo, you're talking about electric cars and all that. I, I don't think you, may, you would go to any place and see or talk about sending money, <laughs> right? Maybe you saw something that I'll send money from person. It, no, 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 you won't talk about that. Yeah. And, to be, and that's the area we as Africans now need to start focusing on. Great company, great finance companies have done a lot for us here. I think founders need to Stop think, pivoting. Yeah, pivoting, moving to things that it will take time to build, mm -hmm. but these things will they will move, you know, the, the lever. They will actually change the way people, you know, uh, uh, like you know, people even view technology in Africa, yeah. and we will become majority of creators of technology rather mm -hmm. than consumers, mm -hmm. right? And that's what, for example, in the telecommunication space. So. As we grew very well, we hired um, um, a new um, chief operations officer. So she she has been in the telecommunications space for 14 years. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons she even joined us, not like we were paying high anything major, right? One of the reasons she joined us to help out to build a structure, like business-wise, was mm -hmm. that she said that for all her years in the telecommunications space, she has never seen any startup actually disrupting the mm -hmm. core part of the telecommunications space. Everybody just, you know, Smaller ISPs just buy license from bigger ISPs and, and just put out the look for customers, the same set of customers, right? And reduce the cost of data. Just basic things, right? Nothing special. Same, 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 way, same thing. Yeah. You're just, just putting, you're just yeah. changing the color, changing the, the skin and all that. So, so that's why when she saw this, it was really remarkable. And she was like, look, that this is something that would make her, you know, want to even work with us for some time. So, yeah, that's basically you know, something. Let's challenge ourselves really as entrepreneurs and not focus on doing things that, you know, um, every other person is basically doing. Because look at the big investors throwing money at Africans, right? Take a deeper look at those guys. Their portfolios too. Exactly. When you see what they have done, when wow. you see the companies, they've, you realize that, look, we, if we're able to build deep um, companies that focus on deep tech, techs that take time to build, but also can change the narrative, improve humanity a lot, you realize that we will also start writing checks. What I'm, the future I'm praying for, right, mm -hmm. is a future where Nigerian entrepreneurs or African entrepreneurs yeah. will start writing huge checks, yeah. have huge, you know, stake. Uh, yeah, huge stake in the global technology mm -hmm. space rather than just always receiving, right? Yeah, so that, that's actually a future I'm looking forward to. Interesting. And so another assignment is kindly share with me the three or four uh, lessons or advice that Ugochuku has shared with us today for startup founders. We'll go on a short break and this final session will be bonus questions for Ugo. And if he misses this one, he's giving me one Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> you all had it here first. He's laughing. You all had it here first. We've signed it. I don't want you to see his signature, so we'll, we'll go on a break. And when we we'll go on a break, he'll be signed. Then we, may like put him on this whole seat that he misses it. You know, Bitcoin, they might want it like this. <laughs> we're we'll going back on the shop. Let's go on the shop break. Discover amazing entrepreneurs with successful businesses and creating impacts on the Business Leader of the Week show every Saturday. The internet is not just a web, it is also an estate. Catch the exciting stories of people making money on the internet live on the Internet Business Show every Friday. Enjoy exciting and educating talks on tech and its future on TechGist every Wednesday. Enjoy global and local news in different languages on Tech News every Tuesday. 
Discover entrepreneurs making impacts and changing lives on the top 5 entrepreneurs every Thursday. Catch all of these exciting shows live on Daba TV. Go and share. So even the last one you shared had to resonate with me because when I look at my company today, the only close to fintech product we want to build is something that just does payment for receive crypto payments and that's because of what we encountered with the banking system. Yeah. Um, some months back, some payment providers asked us to stop that they should stop uh, supporting supporting mm -hmm. us. It's not because we sell crypto. It's just because we, one of our courses has crypto in it <laughs> in our editor company. And it's a funny thing, and it will stop us from building. And just like you said the other day, it was even one, another products we've been building and working on is Daba Kit. Okay. Uh, the era of just... And if I say this thing, some of our fintech brothers used to come at me. I would say, if USDT transfer can solve all your fintech problem, you should know that... There's a big, yeah. there's a big there's challenge. A big challenge yeah. Because uh, for me, I travel a lot. And so if I'm in Dubai, if I'm in Ghana... Short, I remember there was a time we did a tour in 2018 or 19 to so about five African nations. And no fintech app saved us. Yeah. It was only USDT that saved us. Bitcoin, transfer. In short, uh, we got to a particular time in Benin Republic where we needed to change money. I needed to give this cooperative Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. In Dubai, it was under crypto I changed. In uh, Ghana, it was still crypto. Yeah. In Cameroon, it was still crypto. Uh, there was this country who you used and one Af one French country like that. It was still crypto at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. So, and your your fintech app is still limited to the country regulations, regulations exactly and all that. Okay, maybe we'll have another discussion on this whether yeah. you should build a fintech app or not. But this time, we want to go on this hot bonus question session with Ugo. And Ugo, this is the rule. I will ask you. <laughs> <laughs> He's already laughing. <laughs> Uh, he has given somebody BTC already, so <laughs> I've been charged now. I just asked you this question, bonus question. You just, you, you just answer it sure. straight up. Okay? Sure. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm uh, There's no ready. phony friend here. Yeah. No problem. There's no... <laughs> All right, so describe yourself in five words. <laughs> One. I... Okay. Five. Five words. Five words. Five okay, words. okay. okay. Five words. Okay. Um, disciplined. Um, energetic. Mm -hmm. Two. Um, <laughs> experimental. Three. Um, visionary. Four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Athletic. Mm, five. Athletics is because you used to go to the gym or what? Yeah, I like to work out um, because I mean it helps it helps me to like to think, relieve stress, and also, I mean, um, there's this one of my one of my friends, uh, Choka. He was like, I saw it on his WhatsApp status there, and since then I haven't forgotten that thing. Hmm. He said, "A strong mind can't reside in a weak body." Hmm. Right. So if you actually have a very strong mind, you need a strong and healthy body to feed it. Mm. Because you see, there are so many great and brilliant people where you look at maybe one ailment that because of maybe because they were not eating well, they were not taking care of their bodies. Mm. They just got sick, you know. Yeah. So I just try and it helps really it helps with overall well-being, mental and physical well-being. Yeah. Interesting. OK, number two. You know what? You, you, the delay there, that delay, then you were saying the delay there with 0 0.1 BTC already left. Ah, so. <laughs> you didn't tell didn't me about that. <laughs> All right. If you were an animal in the sea, what animal would you rather be and why? Uh, uh, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to be um, a shark. Interesting. And why I'll be a shark is, I think, for two or three reasons. One, sharks keep moving, right? Mm. They don't stop. They mm. just keep moving. And then secondly, sharks have, like, this presence that attracts other smaller, 
you know, um, let's say smaller fishes mm. or other smaller sea animals, mm. they come and stick to their bodies mm. and they move with the shark everywhere the shark is going. Mm. And what that does, it prevents other predators, mm. right? Sea creatures from coming to it eat them, the right? So, and I have that kind of, um, I mean, I mean, I, I run a business where you have a lot of people who depend on you, who mm. always, you need to carry along. Mm. And it's very, one of the reasons we've grown isn't just because of me, I mean, it's the people mm. that you've carried along over the years. You would see people that had zero engineering background that you know that if these people are just in the wild, they'll probably be doing some fraud or whatever. Mm. And these guys are now senior engineers building amazing things, right? So for me, I see myself as being able to give that kind of platform in a small way as I've been doing, right? Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's lovely. I was enjoying the, the shark lecture. It's like, go when I give Ugo a question, he looks for a way to bring a master class to him. <laughs> <laughs> Only asked you for describe yourself in the world and the athletic parts. They're giving us lecture again on mindset and success. Well, that's a good one. Number three, tell me the nickname your parents used to call you when you were little. And how did you hear it? <laughs> okay, so, so actually, when I was small, my parents and people around, like, my, my family, they used to call me, so for, I don't know why, well, okay, I know why, but they used to call me America then. Wow. And why was because I love to drink tea a lot. Okay. I, even till today, I, there's no morning, no matter what you want to give me for breakfast, if there's no, I'll tell you, you have to, I must drink tea. I love to drink. So, you know, then they see tea as something white people <laughs> drink, you know, so... Every time, any place you go to, you like, ah, America. So I go, like, drink tea. Uh, yeah, so I love to drink tea, yeah. Okay. And today, it's, it's frequenting America almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, what is your favorite childhood memory? Favorite childhood memory? Wow. Okay, wow. Okay, this, actually, this, this is my favorite childhood memory. And, okay, I'll say why, but yeah. A very childhood memory was actually when um, my mom told us she was going to buy us a computer. Mm. Right? So we'll see how it happened. Um, she first bought, because you know, then, I mean, buying a computer was, I think this was like 2004 or something. It was a big deal. So in our primary school then, in Enugu, we didn't, like, when you just go to the computer lab, all of you would just be around one computer. Mm. They would tell you, move the mouse. Maybe you move the mouse. They tell, okay, all of you go. Another person will come and move the mouse. And then it was just so. So um, my mom b got us a computer, and that was I think when I was now entering secondary school or so. But she got us a computer. But before she got the computer, she got the computer table because you know it's not as if there was money to buy uh -huh. everything. Well. So she bought the computer table first, and then. Every morning after we have devotion, you know, in the house, that's family devotion. Me and my, because we are four boys. Mm. I'm the last of four boys. We will all rush upstairs to the computer table. Mm. Somebody will sit down and someone will just be, we are, there's no computer. Uh, but you're just talking about uh, it. So honestly, like, we did that thing for like three months uh, before she actually now bought. Because, you know, there's a way they do, there's this cooperative thing they are having. In, so they do like Isusu and all that. So that's why even when we were building like Zen Finance and the idea of cooperatives, you know, it was, it was, I knew it because this was something I grew up with. Wow. So, you know, I, and when she now bought the computer, ah, we now love, it, all our friends will come around, you know, the house to use the computer. That was, that was a lovely memory and it, it, can, it can't leave my mind. You know, while you were mentioning that, how mom got you a computer, how um, the Susu yeah. became an idea. And I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to establish a kind of theory and concept on how some of the things we are building today are kind of linked to some of the experiences Especially we had, had yeah. while growing up. Because for me, uh, using my my late father exposing me to using a palm top at mm -hmm. an early age. I, this one, I, can remember, I can remember this one in France, 98. I was eight years old. And you see my dad brought, gave me palm top from existing San Luba Computer Training Center. And then I'll be asking different questions. I can, I can remember one time, when I had to ask the same computer, when would Jesus come? <laughs> and it kept on loading, loading, loading. I won't forget this one. Okay, using Lotus One, Two, Three, early playing Pac-Man on, on system. And today, the reason why I'm building Daba Kids is because of I know how how bright, how sharp your that, mind, yeah, my mind, yeah, exactly. because of yeah. exposure yeah, to exposure. Yeah. to. 
I don't write codes today, mm. though, but I know that at age 13, 14, my dad already dragged me already to one NIT guy that yeah. finished NIT. And when that guy was teaching me coding, I was like, is this how this thing is, looks yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. I, I got to lesson of C++, Visual Basic, writing applications. And like, fine, I've known this thing, but even though I'm not going to do the future yet, yeah. but that thing yeah, it, opened, yeah, it opened up, up yeah, it does. my brain. It, it and today, if, if, if I mention the story of building Daba Kit, I, I won't I won't I won't erase the part of the, saying yeah. I'm doing this because of what the, the impact of yeah. computer, okay, digital education early enough in my life. And that's 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 a good one. That's a sweet, sweet, sweet one. Thank you. And the final one, if there is a place you never want to live, where is it? Is it never want to live or ever want to live? You don't want to live there. You don't want to ever live there. Where? Wait, a place I wouldn't want to stay, right? I mean, I want to Yeah, leave. you don't want to leave. So, Either physical <laughs> or metaverse experience. <laughs> so the thing is, right, I, I, I feel very, 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 very bad saying this, but I just hope it will change, right? But if I don't want to live anywhere, it's going to be in the northern part of Nigeria. And why I feel bad saying it is because my parents basically spent the majority of their lives and my mom was born there. Mm. So my parents speak house are really well even mm. to today like maybe when they want to say something they don't want you to know <laughs> <laughs> no honestly like i know they were doing it a lot then you know they want you to know what they're talking about they just start to speak house right and the experience i mean i think my mom told the university of zaria she because she's a medical doctor right mm. yeah my dad is a chartered accountant and you realize that this their exposure then if they tell you the experiences they were having in the north mm. you feel like is this the same nigeria Right. I don't want to talk. Exactly. So for me, I actually feel, and, my, and why, one of the reasons I wouldn't even want to do that, my eldest brother, when, I think during the NYSC, he almost lost his life in some of these agitations. Mm. It was a northerner that even protected him, you know, when they were killing a lot of them there. Mm. It was crazy. It wasn't a good experience. So I don't want to experience that kind of thing, but mm. I would love to have, you know, a government that, would, things, will, that things will change and I could visit and experience, you know, the good part of that place. Because I know they are good, great people. Yes. You know, and all that. So that's, that's it. But I wouldn't love to live there now. Interesting. Uh, you know, when you mentioned the part of um, a good governor, governance, uh, for those of you watching who are in Nigeria, where there are those who are watching outside Nigeria, and of course, our audience outside the country, the, it's the year 2022, and we are at a very crucial moment yeah. in our country that could decide the future yeah. of even businesses, yeah. entrepreneurs, yeah. leadership, and all. Yeah. And that's why, if you're a Nigerian, in 2023 election, we're not going to separate business from politics. No. It's time for you to get your PVC yeah. and go exercise your right and vote the person, the leader who has your future in mind yeah. and not his ego, not his business, not his friend, his future. I keep telling people, if you add your age with eight, eight years, years. Yeah. think about it. Some yeah. of us have had crazy experience in building businesses yeah. Yeah. in the last seven years because Correct. of the existing system. Correct. You don't want to have this re thing repeat itself again. I was, I, I, I did ICANN and, and my, my tax um, teacher, Mr. Taiwo Yudeli, I was watching his face, I was on his Facebook, he works with PwC. Okay. I, was, I was on his Facebook wall today, and he was sharing with me, he was sharing on his Facebook wall how even our diesel and our petrol were still paying higher than oh, yes. those yeah. who are even importing, who don't even have, and even those who also have, were still even paying higher in the same Africa. Yeah. So a lot of things need to be done because with good leadership, businesses will thrive. You want to see what goes on in the U.S. Whatever you see the U.S., whatever you see the U.K., whatever you see advanced nations, Singapore, uh, yeah. Morocco, whatever you've seen them enjoy today, Egypt, yeah. whatever you've seen them enjoy today is because of good and sound leadership. If there's no leadership on ground, inventors will run away. Yeah. If there's no leadership on ground, the system will crumble your ideas and your business. And that's a wrap today. Ugo, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Chris. I enjoyed this, oh, and it looks as if we shouldn't stop. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to start considering, maybe we'll talk about it after this show. I have to look for the kind of course 
that Ugome come and teach us at Dabado School. <laughs> something we just have to look for something that will go and come and share his knowledge and insight. Happy, happy, okay. happy to do that. I always, I mean, for school, for people to learn, I'm very happy. That's happy great. And until I come your way next time, go build that business, go and succeed. And please remember, you can still get on board Ycrypt. The adverts are there on the screen. And it's not just about listening. Go and implement what you've learned today. So I come your way next time. God bless you. Thank you.